I've chosen to start today's episode with a little bit of a poem um, because I think it's uh, fitting um, considering our result, our 2-1 loss uh, against Cagliari. Um, I know he's one of my favourite poets, Uh, you might have heard of him, he's he's from Argentina, Uh, used to be a footballer, I think he's a full-time poet. Um, Anyway, it's in the hardest moments that real love is shown. In those moments, I've always chosen to stay at Inter with Inter. Hmm. Food for thought. Okay, so what went wrong? Time to review our 2-1 loss against Cagliari. And uh, in that first half, pretty much everything went wrong. Um, Inter were out-battled, outplayed by Cagliari. You know, Cagliari and the, the coach Maran, everyone knows what they're all about. They love crossing it in to their big man, Pavoletti, who scored 50% of his goals this season with his head. Um, most of the midfielders, apart from Barella, are all six foot. You know, the likes of Yonita and um, Farago, uh, six foot plus players who like to come into the box for headers. And uh, guess how we conceded? Through a header. Um, after uh, many, many crosses that came into the box and we weren't able to stop. Uh, Cagliari got the lead thanks to Cepitelli um, from a free kick that shouldn't have been given because the uh, screeniest tackle was clean. But anyway, um, Inter defending wasn't good enough in that case. And then from then on, you just knew what type of match it was going to be. Inter were up against it straight from then. Uh, managed to claw back the lead thanks to a brilliant Rajan Angolan cross and a great movement and header by Lautaro Martinez to make it 1-1. And then Cagliari once again uh, took the lead through another cross from the right from uh, Dario Serna, a 36-year-old Croat who seemed like he was uh, 22, uh, full of running and his crossing was miles above what Danilo D'Ambrosio ever managed to do in his career. Um, Gave him a a right masterclass in how to be a a right back. Um, Pavoletti scored with his feet um, and Handanovic was a statue. You can tell I'm not happy with the performance. Um, the thing that annoys me the most is, you know, okay, you can be outplayed by a team sometimes, but you know, being outbattled by a team like Cagliari who don't have much to play for, um, you know, they're showing so much heart, and we have a, a fourth place that is, uh, you know, literally hanging by a thread now. Um, Milan and Roma can overtake us in the next match if they win. In terms of the player ratings, I'm not even in the mood to give player ratings today, guys. Um, Sunita's given out his, um, as always, um, I want to hear your ratings, please comment down below because I, I, don't, I don't feel like giving any of these players a ratings today, um, I wasn't impressed with the, any of the performances apart from uh, Lautaro Martinez and Raja Nangolan's performance, uh, one of those two was my man of the match, um, let's give it to Lautaro just for the, the great goal and his movement throughout the match. The rest of the team was so, so subpar. Um, Marcelo Brozovic was my biggest disappointment in this match. I think this was his worst match of the season. Um, his radar with his passing was completely off. Uh, he made uh, some silly mistakes in the beginning, uh, which seemed to uh, you know, distract him from the rest of the match. Um, his running wasn't as good as usual. And of course, he's never helped by his midfield partner, Vecino, who um, had one other one of those showings where he just looked like he doesn't know where to move and what to do with the ball when he has it. Had a great chance as well. Uh, and I'd also like to give a special mention to uh, Boja Valero who when he came on at least uh, showed a bit of class and calmness on the ball. Um, made some good passes but had a brilliant chance to score. Um, made a great fake shot and then just as he often does as soon as he gets in front of the goal he, he forgets about his calmness and his uh, experience that he has all these years playing football and just shoots the ball over like a complete amateur. Um, I don't know how this guy is now 34 and still hasn't learned how to shoot. And then, <laughs> of course, Antonio Candreva came on and um, wow. I mean, I heard the, the US government is paying $1 million uh, to find uh, you know, the terrorist uh, Osama Bin Laden's son. But there's a terrorist at Inter and uh, I'm willing I'm willing to put together a GoFundMe campaign for, 
for someone to take Kandreva off our hands because this guy is the biggest terrorist I've seen in my life. This guy has been terrorizing Inter fans for over a year now. Um, came on in, 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 near the end of the second half. Um, Ronokia was brought on to try to win headers and um, all the centre-backs go up. Um, Kandreva lines up to uh, take the free kick and guess what? Shoots and it goes miles wide and over. Team has now conceded five goals in the last 180 minutes, which is worrying. Um, you know, at least even in our dark periods, the defense was uh, still solid. And um, conceding this many goals recently is, is a worrying sign, uh, especially uh, in, the, in our next match against Eintracht Frankfurt on Thursday. They have a formidable front three line uh, with Jovic, Halla, and um, Rebic. So I am really worried uh, going into that match. As I said, in the last two match reviews, I'm, I wasn't convinced that Inter of our crisis, even though we had four wins in a row. I still wasn't convinced by the performances. Um, I don't think it has to do with the Cardi missing. Of course, it would have been great to have Mauro Cardi there out on the pitch when, uh, when we were struggling to score and create chances. Um, but once again, you know, the, the problems that were there when the Cardi was there are still there. You know, the lack of uh, quality fullbacks and a uh, good midfield is still there. And after the Frankfurt match, we have Spau straight after that on Sunday. Um, so it's a really, really, really key period for Inter. We need to win these matches. Our Champions League spot is really in danger now. Uh, Spalletti's job is really in danger now. Um, I've been a supporter of his, but if we, if we don't manage to keep third place, um, or even uh, worse, uh, get out of the Champions League top four spots, um, then it's goodbye Spalletti. Um, of course, if we have a good run in the cup, that might uh, that might help him. Um, but I'm, uh, I'm I'm not very positive about uh, Spalletti staying past this season. Of course, he has had a lot of off-field problems that he's had to deal with, which he has dealt with magnificently. But that's it from me, for guys. I want to hear I want to hear your thoughts. Please comment below. Uh, what did you think of that performance? Um, well, how would you rate the players? Give me a player ratings because I'm just not in the mood to rate these players. Always guys, please like and subscribe. Um, I'll see you in the next one for the Eintracht Frankfurt, hopefully, fingers crossed, a win.